Good afternoon and welcome to the City Council meeting for the City of International Falls for Monday, August 6, 2018. I would ask all present to please arise and pledge allegiance to our flag. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice. Thank you. I would ask the city administrator to note the roll call with all members of the council present. Move to the agenda and we have proposed four additional items to the agenda. Under new business, item number two, uh, approve the use of Smoky Bear Park for a movie in the park by uh, Fire Rescue EMS Department. Item 14, approve establishment of a dog park committee. Item 15, under new business, approve appointment of Michelle Rasmussen as a casual paramedic. And item 16, grant permission for Midco to um, have a second feed and an origination point at Bacchus. Your pleasure with the agenda and the additions. Motion by Councilor Pearson to approve the agenda with the additions. Second. Second by Councilor Jackson. Discussion on the motion or the agenda with the additions. <laughs> Hearing no discussion, Chair would place the question. Aye. 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 I would vote yes. Motion is carried. Agenda is approved with the additions. Thank you. Move to the minutes of the July 16th regular City Council meeting. Move. Motion by Councillor Briggs to approve the minutes. I'll second. Second by Councilor Droba. Discussion on the motion or the minutes? I have one minor in my bedtime reading on the uh, page four of the minutes, the item uh, resolution number 33-18. I think there's two numbers transposed. I believe that the Elks Corn and Broadfeed is August 17 in 2018 and not August 18 in 2017. So hopefully uh, with that change. Further discussion or uh, Questions with regard to the minutes? Are there none? Question? Aye. 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 Oh, yes, motion is carried. Minutes are approved. Thank you. Move to the payment of claims and transfers. Uh, transfer to fund number 101 of the general fund from the lodging tax fund, $769.96. Accounts payable claims for the City of International Falls, $511,091.77. Airport Commission claims of $145,809.89. And Airport Commission Terminal Project Phase Two claims of $39,678.10. Your pleasure with the resolution approving the payment of claims and transfers. Move. Motion by Councillor Briggs. Second. To adopt the resolution. Second by Councillor Pearson. Discussion on the motion or the resolution. Hearing none, question. Aye. 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 Yes, motion is carried. Resolution is adopted, approving the payment of claims and transfers. Thank you. 
move to the audience. Is there anyone in the audience that wishes to approach the council at this time on any subject that's not on the agenda? None. Uh, there is another opportunity at the close of the meeting for audience participation. We will move to the uh, public hearing and we have the first reading of the ordinance of the fifth series, an ordinance of the City of International Falls annexing land located in Kuchin County pursuant to Minnesota statutes 414.033 subdivision 2. This would require council action for the first reading. The administrator. Mayor, um, as you pointed out, this is a first reading of an ordinance to annex land in the city. It identifies properties that are in sole ownership of the city of International Falls and adjacent or abutting to the existing corporate limits of the city of International Falls. And uh, it's our intention to attach a, a map exhibit, um, but because on Friday we have not had an opportunity to prepare that map. But uh, the ordinance as you have it before you was drafted by the city attorney, and uh, this would be the first step uh, to annex parcels again that above uh, the city limits. For other properties that are proposed to be annexed into the city. There's a separate process that involves a more in-depth public hearing, and uh, that would be a secondary process that would be. Thank you, Con uh, City Attorney. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor and Council. Uh, uh, this ordinance would include all of the parcels that are currently solely owned by the city and not within the city limits but that would abut the current city limits. Uh, there uh, uh, is at least one parcel, maybe two, uh, that we couldn't include because they, uh, there's a little gap uh, between uh, where these parcels began and where the current city limits started. We can include those on the others. We, we have a number of uh, 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 other uh, situations where the city may be a part owner uh, or uh, like with the Wagner property uh, out near the ponds uh, where they've asked the city uh, to uh, uh, be included and be annexed into the city uh, and then uh, some uh, properties uh, uh, where uh, we are uh, dealing with other entities uh, and uh, uh, this would include uh, the uh, the uh, entities that we have discussed in the past, the properties we've discussed in the past, and that process is we need to notify the state, we need to notify uh, all of the, the other property owners. We have to have notice and a public hearing uh, that would be conducted, uh, and then uh, it ultimately has to all be approved uh, by the state of Minnesota before the annexation can be complete. Uh, but this this before us today uh, is a fairly simple, straightforward process, uh, and uh, uh, passing the ordinance is uh, all that's required. We need to notify the state, but the state really isn't involved uh, in uh, requiring approval uh, for it. Uh, so I would urge the council to adopt this. We've talked about it a number of times over a number of years, and I'm in the process uh, with the city administrator uh, of uh, getting the paperwork going on the, on the others uh, and uh, hopefully we'll uh, have something to present uh, to the council uh, or at least an update on our progress at the next uh, city council meeting. And that's all I have on this issue. Thank you. Council's pleasure then with the first reading of the ordinance. So moved. Motion by Councilor Droba to have the first reading of the ordinance of the fifth series on the annexing land to the city. Second. Second by Councilor Pearson. Question or questions? Seeing and hearing no uh, discussion, the 
Question. Aye. 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 I would vote yes. Motion is carried and the first reading is approved. Thank you. Move to the consent agenda. Item one under the consent agenda is to authorize registration, lodging, and travel expenses for Councilor Droba to attend the Border to Border Broadband Transforming Minnesota program at Madden's on Gull Lake. Item two is to approve uh, necessary expenses for two administrative staff to attend the Civic Systems 18th Annual Symposium on Technology at uh, Wisconsin Dells. Item three is to uh, approve the Public Employees Retirement Association Spare Firefighter Engineer Declaration for Adrian Luce, a membership in the uh, Public Employees Police and Fire Plan. Item four is to confirm approval of ordinance number 24 of the fifth series and ordinance amending the Home Rule Charter in sections 18 through 110, 111, 113 through 117, 121 through 123, and 134 to be effective 90 days after publication. Item five under the consent agenda is to approve the application to conduct off-site gambling for the Rainier Recreation Club on August 21, 2018 at the Elks Lodge. And item six is to approve application to conduct off-site gambling for the recreation, Rainier Recreation Club on September 14 at the Elks Lodge. Your pleasure with the consent agenda. agenda. Motion by Councillor Jackson to approve the consent agenda. Second. Second by Councillor Pearson. Question. Aye. 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 I have a vote yes. Motion is carried. Consent agenda is approved. Thank you. Move to new business. Item one under new business to approve the use of Smoky Bear Park on August 15 in recognition of Princess for a Day. Uh, this is a uh, uh, group of uh, citizens who are want to honor a, uh, a young cancer victim and uh, asking the city to uh, allow them to use Smoky Bear Park uh, for that and to declare this uh, young a uh, child, a uh, princess for the day in International Falls. So moved. Motion by Councilor Groba. Second. Oops. Second by Councilor Pearson. Discussion? Mr. Mayor. Please. There was no information in our council packet about this. Right. Is there anything that, uh, anything that we as a city council can do to help? Is there anything that they'd like from us other the than? The group was meeting on Friday and I thought I would hear from them, but I haven't heard from them yet today. But they had a call last week and said that they were uh, putting together this group and this um, young child has uh, terminal cancer and they just wanted to uh, uh, do something to uh, in her battle. So I don't have anything more to, to offer you at this time. I would hope to have that and I would put out a uh, email memo to everyone once they uh, know that. Other questions or discussion? Question. Aye. 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 I would vote yes. Motion is carried and use of Smoky Bear Park is approved. Thank you. Item number two is also a use of Smoky Bear Park, and that's uh, an addition on the agenda this evening, and that's for um, Saturday, August 18, for a movie in the park, and that's a fundraiser by the Fire Rescue EMS Department. Move. Motion by Councillor Briggs. Second. Second by Councillor Pearson to approve use of the Smoky Bear Park on Saturday at 7.30 p.m. for a movie in the park. Question. Question. Aye. 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 I would vote yes. Motion is carried and approval is given. Thank you. Item number three is to approve the International Falls Figure Skating Club request to conduct a Monster Dash 5K run at 10 a.m. on Saturday, October 6, 2018. And Tina Sather is not here. 
Uh, information. Uh, Mayor, they're proposing a 5K fundraiser run on October 6th at the Monster Dash. Um, they'd like to, uh, they've held two events the last two years. Um, they plan to use the same route as the Bronco 5K, uh, which is held on July 4th of each year, and attached a map that shows a proposed route. Uh, the first year they said they had 60 participants. Last year it was down to 15, but it was a cold and rainy day, so dress up in scary outfits because it is a quote unquote monster dash. Um, but it's not required, and, and so um, asking that um, parking the corners of the route so there isn't any confusion about what the uh, where people need to turn on the route. But um, they're asking for council approval. Council's pleasure with the uh, request to uh, conduct a 5K run. Moved. Motion by Councillor Jackson. Second. Second by Councillor Briggs. Discussion? Question? Aye. 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 I vote yes on that motion, and motion carries, and uh, approval is given for a 5K run. Thank you. Item number four under new business <coughs> resolution approving a sales tax and authorizing a referendum question on the November 6th, 2018 general election ballot. I would uh, make that motion, but I'd like to make some t amendments to uh, to the um, resolution. Okay, motion by Councilor Droba to ad adopt the resolution and the uh, chair is open to amendments uh, once we have a second. Second. Second by Councillor Briggs. And Councillor Droba, you have some addition or some amendments. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, we did have a budget and finance meeting this morning and we were waiting for additional numbers to come in, especially on our, uh, on our sewer um, repair that's necessary for the upcoming years. Uh, the discussion we had uh, was earlier today is we have quite a few needs towards the city for infrastructure. Uh, on the proposed paperwork that we have, the resolution that's before us, there's a couple additional things that have been added on here that I think we could take off just because of the extreme need that we have in uh, the main public works, of, um, sewer, water, uh, street repair. Uh, I would like to, on page one, second to last paragraph, where it says, ends at lift stations on the second to the last sentence, put a period after lift stations and cut out International Falls Airport runway, taxiway, and emergency services and public works facility. On the second page, I would like to completely cut out the whereas that says, whereas the city local share of costs for the four stage reconstruction of the main runway and taxiway at the Falls International Airport is estimated at Four, uh, $437,500. On page three, I would like to cut out after uh, in the second paragraph, four phase airport runway and taxiway reconstruction project with a total share cost of $437,500. And under it, be further resolved, I would like to change the number from 29 million to 30 million dollars. The reason for those changes specifically is we are already at 28, $28.346 million dollars um, and that's if we were to start the process in the next um, the next year. The longer we go down the road, the more roads that are going to be broken up and I, I tried to find the exact number and I couldn't do it. 
if we don't fix the roads that are right now at uh, $7.4 million, in three years they're gonna be deteriorate, deteriorated to the number of 21 million or 22 million. I don't remember what the exact number is, but we need to get on this sooner than later. And I think if we wanna sell this to our community, we need to definitely cut out the airport and any of the other services and focus in specifically on the infrastructure projects of the roads. Uh, I'm gonna stop you there, uh, Councilor Droba. Um, I, I want a second to the amendment before we have further discussion. Dang you. I'll second. Second by uh, Councilor Jacksaw then on the amendment. And uh, just to go through the amendment, make sure that I have it correct. On the page one of three of the resolution, on the fourth whereas, you wish to eliminate the words Falls International Airport Runway and Taxiway, comma, and Emergency Services and Public Works Facilities? Correct. On page two, and it would be the fifth whereas, you want to eliminate that completely? Correct. That's the city local share cost for the four phase reconstruction of the main runway and taxiways of the Falls International Airport, estimated at 47,500. Correct. And then on page three of the resolution on the first, be it further resolved, down at the fifth line, you want to eliminate the four phase airport runway and taxiway reconstruction project with local costs, local share of costs of 47,500. Correct. And then on the third, be it further resolved, you want to change the figure from 29 million to 30 million. Correct. And then again on the last, be it further resolved, change it from 29 million to 30 million? That is correct. That's. Uh, yeah, not, yeah. All right. So then, discussion with regard to uh, the, the amendment and the resolution. Mr. Mayor, and the, the, the main reason for it is when we were having the discussion earlier today, we had a guesstimated number waiting for, uh, for information from our uh, engineer. We had a, a guess that it was gonna be about $7 million for the sewer. And it didn't come in at seven million, it came in at 10 to $12 million. Uh, with that being said, I think we have a huge need for the bare bones of our city infrastructure, street, water, and sewer. Um, and our water treatment facility, um, specifically the storage tanks. So I think that we can easily, as we have in the past, be able to fund the airport, um, as we, we have in the past, pull it out of the levy, because um, that's a, a need for our community. But I think if we're going to go for a sales tax, we definitely need to be focused in on what we're gonna do, and that's gonna be the city infrastructure. Any further discussion by the council with regard to the amendment or the resolution? Culmination of a lot of homework by the mayor and several meetings by budget and finance and I think that after much discussion and consideration we've arrived at this point as the wisest decision for our constituents really that other cities, that our sub-regional centers like us have gone this route. Um, that when it comes to the referendum, that people seriously consider investment in their hometown and I would like to, uh, to begin by saying that um, when I uh, took the mayorship in 2013, um, one of my goals was to reduce uh, overall spending um, in hopes of increasing spending on infrastructure improvements in the community. Because I felt that good, good infrastructure is a uh, 
good environment for citizens and businesses to invest in the community. And we did make, uh, the council together has, over the past uh, six years that I've been here as mayor, have uh, continued to try to reduce costs. And uh, we, we're reducing costs today uh, that we had back in 2013 of uh, well over $100,000 a year. Uh, I had hoped for more than that. Um, I was probably uh, mistaken in my uh, my belief that it could be done, but uh, and so uh, uh, as Councillor Droba has pointed out, uh, as chair of the Budget and Finance Committee, and he and I serve on the Public Works and Infrastructure Committee, uh, we have had a consulting engineer doing a study of our streets, um, giving us their best estimate of what it would cost to put our streets in reasonable shape. Um, what it would cost to uh, have our water lines, to have our uh, sanitary sewer, to have our storm sewer. Uh, those basic uh, infrastructures of a community and why we're together uh, as citizens, uh, that cost is going to be somewhere in the 28 to 30 million dollars. Uh, and so uh, trying to figure out how to do that. And presently, we're, uh, we're spending somewhere between uh, uh, a half a million to a million and a quarter each year on uh, on capital improvements in the city and uh, this past year uh, um, in 2017 we uh, did very little in the way of streets we actually set aside money to uh, be able to do the 12 blocks that we're doing this year so we're doing one mile of street improvements uh, six blocks on uh, 9th Avenue, another uh, uh, six blocks over on Crescent Drive. And uh, those, uh, those two projects together uh, are one and a half million dollars. And so uh, we saved up money to uh, uh, try to do something and, and be able to get competitive bids for uh, uh, contractors to come out and uh, uh, do those projects. And so, uh, trying to trying to find uh, more dollars in our budget uh, um, has been a greater challenge than than I anticipated. And uh, as I've just kind of watched around the state and talked to other mayors, uh, we now have 32 cities uh, that are collecting a sales tax of some portion, maybe a half a percent or one percent, and in one city we know it's one and a half percent, uh, the city of Walker uh, presently has approved. And so uh, the, the conclusion that I've come to is that um, we need to find another source in order to keep our infrastructure in good shape to be able to serve the, uh, the citizens of the community and the businesses of the community. I know there's two cities, uh, talked to both of them uh, this year, uh, the city of Blue Earth and the city of Grand Rapids are bringing a question of uh, sales tax to their citizens on November the 6th. By adoption of this uh, resolution, the city council would be putting that question to the citizens of International Falls to help us make that decision. And I, I certainly, uh, think that's the way it ought to be. I think the legislature has outlined a, a very good process. And so uh, this question, uh, if approved here by the council this evening on this adoption of this resolution, uh, would put the question before the citizens uh, of the city on November the 6th to make that uh, uh, deciding question. Now that alone doesn't do the uh, the sales tax in. The next step is that it has to go to the legislature and receive approval. And as we saw last year, the uh, city of Duluth uh, citizens had approved a sales tax increase, uh, although they already had a 1%, this would have added another 1%. The uh, legislature did not approve that. So uh, while they've been given the uh, the, the citizens gave the uh, uh, city leadership uh, the ability to go to the legislature. Um, the legislature did not approve it. 
So I think uh, the, the process is a good one overall. Um, we need to uh, convince the citizens here in the next 90 days of the needs of the city. Uh, I think we can uh, show those by the uh, studies from our consulting engineers, uh, by the uh, public works uh, needs that uh, this community has, and uh, the citizens can help us make that decision. And then uh, we need to take and put together a uh, convincing argument before the legislature in the 2019 session. And even if we get uh, legislative approval in the 2019, um, the then would go to the Department of Revenue to set up the collection of the sales and use tax. And the likelihood that it could occur would uh, likely be somewhere in the July 1st of next year, maybe October the 1st, maybe not even till January the 1st of 2020. So it's going to be some time off. It's not going to happen any, any time uh, real soon, but uh, the process is as it is and, and uh, certainly uh, believe in the process. Further questions or discussion? Right. Councilor Droba. I, I just want to point out one more thing that makes this a little bit easier for the taxpayers of International Falls because right now we have such a need for our public improvement that we need uh, we need funds. If this if this fails, our roads are going to continue to deteriorate. But we will be able to come up with more money, but we will have to levy it to our property owners. This is a way of having uh, our outlying community, Cooching County, Rainier, Little Fork, people that utilize International Falls to help pay for the roads that they use as well. So I think that that's an advantage for our taxpayers to realize that tourism and everyone that's using our streets and coming into our cities will be able to help pay for the, the roads that they're using as well. If they purchase items, if they purchase items inside the, the stores city. that are taxable, um, again, the uh, the sales tax in International Falls would be identical to that of which the state has, where there is no tax on clothing, no tax on medicine or food, and so uh, uh, we would have it. Uh, but you might consider optional items. So if you went and bought a new fishing rod for $50, you'd pay 50 cents more for that fishing rod and reel. Um, if the sales tax was to pass. Correct. Mr. Mayor, Please. I did want to underscore that, I don't know if it was underscored enough so that people are aware, but we are including a bond, ability to bond in this as well. So this is really two parts. It's not only the sales tax, it's granting us the ability to bond, if we choose. If the sales tax was to if pass. If the sales tax goes through, yeah. Yes, thank you. Further questions? Anyone in the audience that has a question or? Patricia Heibel, you want to? Uh... Yeah, I just says a 1% sales tax, and I just want to confirm if that's a 1%. Yes, it, it is a sales and use tax resolution. Thank you. Easy. If I may just add, the reason why that statement does not include local sales and use tax is because the estimated amount is only the sales tax. tax will be a sales and use tax purchase. So in the resolution you're mentioning use tax there. Further down, be it for the result. Yes. Okay. And the, the resolution uh, again calls for um, up to 29 million to be collected or 30 years. 30 million. Excuse me, 30 million. It's got to cross out to 29 now. Thank you. Um, 30 million or 30 years, whichever would come first. City Attorney, do you have any further thoughts uh, that you care to share? 
I don't have uh, anything uh, uh, to add from a legal standpoint, Mr. Mayor. Okay, further questions or discussion on the part of the council? Oh, please. Mr. Mayor, council, uh, just on a side note, you that, that's how we came up with the numbers that we did for this, uh, for, for this, the, for this, the street improvement. Referendum's gonna That, that's included in the numbers that we have. So that, we've done the inspection. The street improvements have been, they, they have researched that. They've gone out and driven every street in International Falls, all 34 miles of them. And consulting engineering firm, best estimate to put streets in reasonable shape would be 7.4 million. And it's on page three. Under further resolved. The first be it further resolved. Estimated cost for street improvements. Roads is 7.4. Uh, water. Uh, 7.7. .7. And sanitary or sewer is 12 million. Uh, and then uh, Highway 53, our portion of that is going to be 1.225. So those are the numbers that get what got put into to come up with the number um, of 28 million 346. But that's to upgrade things today. I, I'm assuming in the next 30 years we'll come up with another two million that we may have to uh, fix. But those those are the numbers today. 7.4 million for the roads, 7.7 .7 for water, 12 million for sewer, and the Highway 53 project of our portion for the city is 1.225. So we've had professional engineers study the roads, the water system, and the sewer system. The Highway 53 improvements that will be made in 2020, um, over $5 million by the state, the city needs to contribute $1.225 million to that, uh, to complete all of the improvements coming to Highway 53 from Memorial Drive down to uh, 3rd Street. And that, those are estimates from the Minnesota Department of Transportation. Is that correct, uh, City Administrator? That is correct. It's bed. It's the engineer. So hopefully the council has done their homework uh, in trying to understand uh, fully what, what we're faced here with. Um, Many other communities um, have adopted the sales tax for infrastructure. Some have done it for other reasons. Um, the city of Grand Rapids is looking to improve their uh, ice arena and build a, a, a daycare facility uh, at the arena. Um, there's, every city has got something different. Uh, East Grand Forks had something different. Fergus Falls had something different. So there's many, many uh, different reasons that cities have gone to that. Um, they've been approved by the legislature and uh, are collecting a sales tax. So if you think that you can um, move away from, from uh, paying the sales tax by going and shopping in Duluth or in Bemidji or Grand Rapids or somewhere else, the likelihood is you're going to be paying somewhere between a half a percent and one and a half percent. Uh, again, the city of Walker is the highest that we know of at one and a half percent, and that was approved by the legislature. Other questions? Big decision on the part of the council, uh, a, a very big decision on the part of the citizens as to uh, where they want uh, uh, improvements to, uh, to go. No further uh, discussion from the council? Uh, place the question. Aye. Aye. 
No. Aye. And I would vote yes. There being four for the resolution and one against, the resolution is adopted and the sales tax and sales and use tax question will go to the voters of the City of International Falls on November the 6th at the general election. Thank you. Uh, I didn't place that correctly. Let me go back and do this one more time. Um, we got a vote on, that was a vote on the amendment. Oh. And, and so the, the vote was on the amendment, uh, which made the changes to the resolution. So can we take that vote again on the amendment to the resolution? Aye. 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 I would vote yes, so the amendment passes, and then to have the main motion as amended, the question. Aye. Aye. No. Aye. Yes, so the uh, amendment passed, five, four, none against, and the main resolution was adopted, four, four, and one against. Thank you. Item five under new business is to uh, consider a resolution to the Board of Directors of the North Kuchiching Sanitary District pertaining to the ownership of the wastewater system. Your pleasure with that resolution. Mr. Mayor, I'll make a motion on that. Motion by Councillor Jackson to adopt the resolution to the uh, North Kuching Sanitary District on the ownership of the wastewater system. Second. Second by Councillor Briggs. Discussion. Please. Um. I agree with much of what's in there. I'm just having difficulty directing other members of the board that we've appointed, I grant you, to take a particular step. I'm having trouble with the process, not the content. I do think also that the underlying issue here is the enabling legislation because of the way the ownership is laid out of the collection system and the enabling legislation also specifies that North, North Cooch Sanitary Sewer District is not only processing but collection. So I have, I think we have a bigger issue here and I don't know if this is the best way to approach it. I may vote for this, but I'm having, you know, a little heartburn on process here and the fact that we are directing people at the board level who are supposed to be you know, using their own discretion and using their own um, position on the board and, and represent us them as to what to do any more than I would direct a member of the airport commission to do something so you know, that's where I'm coming from. Thank you. I do respect the opinions of the long list of people though, that you have here supporting this uh, that work for the city including the administrative the attorney the public works director the street and water commissioner so certainly um, from the standpoint of city governance, this resolution has a lot of support. So. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, I, I would, uh, let me first point out uh, on your, your first point with regard to the six persons who represent International Falls on the North Cooching Area Sanitary District Board. Uh, Councillor Pearson and I are two members of it. There are four citizens at large that uh, uh, represent International Falls there. And it isn't to direct them. Um, it, it, 
on the line number seven under the now, there, now therefore be it resolved, it says that the, be it further resolved that the city council requests. A request I think is, is a, a reasonable word. I, I, if you've got a different word, I'm open to, to having it. But my intentions are to have the six of us get together and have a discussion on why or why not should that ownership be the way that the public works director and the city administrator and the city attorney have all um, placed before the North Cooch. I think it's a reasonable request. Um, and again, I, um, I think just asking them to support it and trying to educate them on why it should be supported and very possibly uh, having uh, the public works and uh, administrative folks uh, be a part of that meeting with them. Uh, that, that's where I would go. So the word is request and not directing them that they have to, but just asking them to support the city council's position. Councilor Droba. I, uh, number one, I, I didn't like the way that this information was presented in our packet because there were two resolutions. The first resolution was to request that, or what was what we just discussed, is that we want to them to pull something from the table. Then secondly, we want them to reject what's pulled from the table. And then three, we want them to accept our resolution but I never received the information of what we're asking them to reject. I did go to the North Cooch Sanitary District today and I did get a copy of the resolution that was on the table out there and I'm gonna be really honest. I don't, I don't know all the nuances of what's happening with this. I understand the bigger picture of what it is. I understand the collection the interceptor and the collector and that the city has maintained that property for the past 35 years. I understand that according to the um, state legislature that the uh, sanitary district owns that particular interceptor. I understand uh, based off of our public works meetings how important that is for the city because we uh, it it can't get dirtied. It can't be too terribly uh, it needs to be maintained, that's the words I'm looking for. It needs to be maintained, and we have done that for the last 35 years. In the event that it is not maintained, then we can have backups in our city, and in the event that we have backups, who's gonna get called? Uh, the North Cooch Sanitary District or the City of International Falls? I understand that there was a meeting on July 13th and we had members of our city um, speak with the sanitary district and trying to come up with a resolution to a lot of these these issues. I, I've, I've heard that there was a, um, a request or a idea that they keep the um, ownership of that interceptor and the City of International Falls gets a maintenance or a joint powers agreement so we, we continue to clean that facility or that interceptor. There's so much information here and I, I just, I, I think rather than us coming up with a resolution that we need to really sit down and finalize that conversation that happened on July 13th. And whatever we come to for a resolution, that's how we work it out. I mean, it, it seems like we have a power struggle right now between the sanitary district and the city. And I, I understand, I, I, I've heard both sides. Both sides make a ton of sense, but I think we have to come to some form of resolution to move forward on this issue. I don't think, it's not my way of doing things is to request someone else to do something as a handshake for me. And I'm not saying that that, but we really need to have a conversation and have everyone agree that we own this, we're gonna have a maintenance agreement and come up with a joint resolution for both both entities to be able to move forward. It, it I understand the city's position. I, I agree with the city's position. It's our, in my opinion, it is our interceptor, but by law, 
it's theirs. We have, we have to figure out some way to get through this and not sending resolutions or emails back and forth. We need to have a sit down face to face and come to a resolution, not write a resolution. So I, I have a ton of respect for everybody that's involved in this process, but this is so big that uh, I think we're, I think everyone is, is holding, holding their cards so close that we can't really have the discussion of what we need to talk about. That, that's just my two cents on the whole subject. Oh, very fair. Thank you, uh, Councillor. I guess I would only respond and I would ask the city attorney and the city administrator to, to uh, uh, also join in and, and uh, present their view. The, um, the, the process started with this question of uh, inflow and infiltration and the first uh, concern that everyone had was uh, who owns what and in the North Kuchiching um, attorney from Duluth, uh, David Oberstar, went through the um, easements, leases, whatever other documents and laid out uh, what they believe, what he believes is the owner of these different items, these different uh, sewer lines. Um, in some cases, uh, the city certainly agrees uh, that the ownership is with uh, North Cooch. Um, in some cases, North Cooch wants to give the city of International Falls some lines because they believe they, the city should take care of them because they don't serve anybody else. And so we've agreed on that point. Um, in the case of the, the line between what I would call Dollar General Store and the flow equalization basin over here um, by the, uh, across the street from the theater, um, as you point out, that has been maintained for over 35 years by the City of International Falls. There are 26 collector lines that connect into that uh, collector. There's uh, probably more than 26 manholes and the city has been maintaining all of those uh, collector lines, connections, maintaining that line because as you point out, if that line isn't kept clean, isn't flowing well, um, if it's to back up, it'll end up in the basements of many of the homes in International Falls. And who is going to get called is going to be the city. And so city staff uh, felt that it was in the best interest to own it. The meeting on July 13th took place and immediately uh, the following Monday, um, the sewer district executive director and attorney came forth with a resolution saying that uh, uh, North Cooch owns all of this and that's the way it's going to be. So there was no, if there was consideration given it was, it, it was lasted only for a short time, maybe over the weekend. And so uh, uh, came back with a, with a resolution saying we thought that uh, the city should own this one line uh, that these uh, stations that are being, the electricity is being paid for by Rainier and East Cooch, that they ought to own those totally and not uh, have to have them maintained by North Cooch where the city pays 88% of the cost of those. And so those are, those are the only two items that are, are before the, uh, the council in this resolution and that would go to the, to the uh, North Coochiching. Board. City Attorney or City Administrator, uh, please weigh in. Mr. Mayor and Council, uh, I was at the July 13th meeting and it was a long meeting, several hours, uh, and I think everybody on behalf of the city and, and we came back here I think after the meeting and, and met in these council chambers to discuss our thoughts and I think we were all under the impression that when we left the July 13th meeting that there were going to be continuing discussions and maybe negotiations for lack of a better term uh, on how to move forward and, and uh, how to uh, 
either uh, attempt uh, alteration of the current ownership issues uh, or enter into some type of uh, joint powers agreement uh, uh, or maintenance agreement um, that specified everybody's responsibilities. Uh, and I think all of us that attended that meeting on behalf of the city were quite surprised by the quick turnaround and, and seeming uh, uh, dismissal, summary dismissal of, of all the issues we provided to the sewer district. Uh, and so, I mean, I, I think that it's very important that continued discussions take place. Uh, and uh, I would agree with the mayor with regards to, as part of this resolution, we're requesting the city representatives, you know, to support the position of the council. We're not directing it. I think if we were to try to direct them to vote a certain way, that would be improper. Uh, but I think letting them know that, uh, you know, we would appreciate or request their support for the city council's position. I don't think there's anything uh, in, inappropriate there. Uh, but you know, by the sewer district putting forth a resolution that you know then was tabled. Fortunately, uh, you know, they, they've almost uh, forced our hand to react in some way. Uh, and uh, whether this resolution is the proper way or uh, some type of discussion uh, with our uh, members uh, on the North Cooch. I mean, there certainly are enough representatives of the city on the North Cooch Sewer District uh, for uh, the city's desires, uh, if those members uh, agreed with the council, uh, to be what would occur. Uh, but it is, it is a complicated situation uh, that involves uh, uh, legislation and, and uh, other things and, and uh, uh, I, I thought we had uh, commenced a, a discussion that would continue uh, and then was quite surprised to kind of have the door slammed in our face <laughs> a few days later. Uh, so, uh, I mean, I, I, I think everybody on behalf of the city is quite frustrated by how we've gotten to this point and, and uh, uh, I think something needs to be done. Uh, so the effect of this resolution is a request. So do you think that at the board is going to have to make that decision and that's why I want to try to educate the members that represent International Falls as to why the City Council, why the City Administration and Public Works believe this is the way it, it, it would be best for the, for the district to operate. The, the one question I do have is if we've been maintaining that interceptor all these years and we really shouldn't have because we don't own it. And the North Cooch Sewer District should have been all these years. We would have been paying 88% of that, not 100%. So actually, we've been overpaying. So I guess I asked then on the dollars side of this, I think there's other questions besides dollars, but why wouldn't we want a maintenance agreement with North Cooch? It would cost our ratepayers less, wouldn't it? If, if North Cooch was doing the maintenance, paying for the maintenance agreement, that cost would be covered by us for our cost to maintain it, and then that would go into the mix and be billed out at 88%. So it's actually cheaper for the city to have a maintenance agreement with North Cooch rather than owning the line. Am I correct? Uh, the Street and Water Commissioner uh, Broca, would you care to respond to that? I guess uh, I asked the same question earlier. <laughs> I asked the exact same uh, question. Both uh, Gary Spellman, our Public Works Director, and the Street and Water Commissioner. Speaking on behalf of myself, not Gary, right. Public Works Director, but they haven't. Five years down the line, now all of a sudden they don't budget to take care of. At 100%. At 100%. But 12% of that go, is covered by ratepayers outside the city. This is more money in the long run. Why? Because they're not.
Yeah, we're going to have to contract with the city, I assume, or we're going to have to reach some type of an agreement, as the city attorney has pointed out, either either through a joint powers agreement as to how this is going to be maintained, and and they don't have the equipment to maintain it. So, uh, Councilor Drova, two questions: When is the next uh, n the next uh, North Cooch Sanitary District meeting? August the twenty first, and the resolution that was presented at the. July meeting um, will be before the board for consideration. Are we going to be able to bring in our six members and have a, a conversation here? I mean, we can, we definitely need to, and I, we talked about this at a public works meeting that it would be great to bring in, uh, you know, post it as a, as a public meeting because you do have a governing body that would be in here and have a discussion with our members and let them know our position because sometimes it's difficult to have that discussion in a larger setting. Uh, but if we bring in our, our members to have that conversation and, and educate people on what our position is rather than just hearing uh, the side at the the sanitary district because I, I just I just think that we need to give people the most opportunity with the most at, at the most information so they can make an educated decision. I, I think it would be great if we could bring them in and have a conversation. Well, and and I guess that was the intent in bringing forth this resolution that outlines what the city position is, and then having the members who represent International Falls on the North Kuchijin District sit down and, and uh, educate or have, I, I, I don't want to be speaking down to people but just uh, presenting them with information as to why this uh, why we believe this is the best way to go and I, I it's not my position it's uh, public works uh, position they believe it's the, the best way to go. And so I've listened to our professional staff as to why that is the case. Yeah. I respect all the hard work and the, and I think we're all on the safe, same side on the council as far as protecting our rate payers as best we can. And I, I don't know if I want to, maybe I shouldn't delve into the enabling legislation. That's a major, the truth is, the city uh, ratepayers have been really paying their unfair share if you look at the way that the costs are incurred and then they're billed out. And the enabling legislation is poorly crafted. It hurts city ratepayers and it has for decades. And I am, I don't know what we do about it, but I don't have a solution. And the mayor and I have discussed really what are the options here. So, but the truth is, is that we're paying, for instance, let's take, uh, let's take the PFA payment. What is it, 1.3 million a year? We're paying 88% of that. We have 69% of the connections. Those costs connected with the PFA are not volume-based, they're fixed. We should be paying on a different basis other than volume. Let's do connections. If it was 69%, that's a 20% savings each and every year of $260,000, which basically represents a cost that's shifted to our ratepayers that we're subsidizing everybody else on. So I just want people to know that, that the city ratepayers are, bear, are bearing more than their fair share and have been for decades. You're, you're right on, and I yeah. guess, you know, I, I've, I've discussed the possibility of going to the legislature with Senator Bach, and uh, he just said, uh, you know, take great caution uh, when you go to try to change something. Um, I don't know if the city attorney or city administrator would have thoughts on trying to get legislation changed, but I think it's going to be uh, uh, a really tough slope to go up. Mr. Merrick, uh, I mean, it's, it certainly is a complicated process uh, and becomes if the sewer district and the city were joining together in an agreement that legislation should be uh, amended, then I think th the chances of it happening would, would be great, uh, although there's certainly a process that's not going to happen overnight. Uh, if the city is requesting one thing and the sewer district <laughs> is saying don't do it, uh, you know, likelihood it's 
it's not going to get very far unless we come forward to the united front. I, I think one of the things that concerns me uh, is that, you know, when this study was done by Mr. Overstar to come up with these who owned what, there were some surprises. Uh, and I think the sewer district has assumed and, and uh, apparently the city of International Falls assumed for all these 35 years or whatever uh, that the city owned this portion of this line that we've been taking 100 percent care of you know, comes to turn out we don't i mean so you know, and there's sections that north cooch owns that appears really would more appropriately be the city you know, which was why we were suggesting this discussion moving forward of okay this might be the way it is uh, on the books now but it's really resulting in an unfair situation. So let's find a way, working together, uh, uh, to solve the issues. Uh, you know, whether it be through changes of ownership, or whether it be through, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, maintenance agreements or joint powers agreements. I mean. Uh, you know, I think a person's imagination is the only limiting factor in how we do it, but what everybody should want is a system that's fair to all involved. Uh, and I think that's what we were talking about with the sewer district. We actually even had, I thought we had agreed to come back and <laughs> have another meeting uh, uh, on the 13th of July. We even had picked a date uh, so that we could act on this quickly because we do have some requirements you know, with the Minnesota Pollution Control Agency and, and their uh, efforts to get us to resolve some of these infiltration issues. Uh, all, I, I was very surprised that we got the reaction that we did uh, with this from the director and the attorney because it really wasn't what they had indicated to us at the meeting at all. Uh, you know, I thought we had this ongoing process that we were going to follow uh, and we were going to involve uh, more directly uh, some of the staff that's actually carrying this out. And, and that's, you know, one of the, you know, it, it certainly makes no sense to continue the same way we have for all these years under uh, false assumptions. Uh, oh, wow. And so th there need to be some changes. You know, I think the nature of those changes is open to discussion. Uh, but, uh, and, and, you know, maybe the, uh, you know, or this resolution is, is, you know, one possible course. Another one would be, well, let's set a meeting, and, and I, I would agree with that we would need to publish notice of it, that uh, have the council and, and uh, our four non-council members uh, on the sewer district get together and have a discussion, because I, I think uh, uh, all of these things, and uh, I believe there may have only been one of those members at the July 13th meeting. Uh, I'm sorry, I can't shut this. It's an off switch. I know. <laughs> I did off on it. <laughs> That's all I have, Mr. Mayor. But I, I, I think communication, open communication, you know, we don't want to have a, a war with the North Cushing Sewer District. I mean, we're all in this together, uh, and we need to find solution because there's problems. Thank you. City Administrator? Mayor, Council, I, I would say I don't have a lot of new information to add. I think the, all the points are really on target about the concerns that the City of International Falls has, as well as recognition that we have for what the North Cooch Board needs to do to try and have a well-functioning sewer district. Um, I would just add, and, and I, I like the way the City Attorney characterized it about the summary dismissal, because I think as he with a afternoon Friday meeting and then a Tuesday morning meeting of the North Cooch Board at 7.30 in the morning and having a resolution that totally disregarded or, or didn't even recognize and acknowledge the points and the questions that we were raising and we were doing so at their request. So um, summary dismissal is probably a fair characterization of that. I would just make the other point is that it, based on the information that the North Cooch City Attorney provided um, as preliminary comments to us is that the decision on ownership of the system, I think, is solely with the North Cooch Board. And so um, working locally to try and come up with a decision that's mutually satisfactory to the City of International Falls, and hopefully North Cooch, East Cooch, and the City of Rennes, and avoids the need to um, the legislature for special legislation. I think 
revenue that we can take here and work locally to come up with a, a mutually satisfactory agreement. And I think I heard Councillor Groba saying that um, having a meeting with our representatives on the North, North Cooch Board makes sense to have a discussion and under, so that they better understand what our concerns are and they can work with us as well as the other parties to come to a um, happy solution. But this really pertains to our representatives on the North Cooch Board. And why would we bring this to the whole North Cooch Because obviously the other three are going to be opposed to this, I would think. The other three uh, the other two members. The other two, two entities. Two members. Yes. There's only eight. I don't. I don't know where where Rainier and East Cooch. Uh, you know. I, I assume that they. I assume they say no. I don't know. Because on the fact that somebody on there is. It, what we're saying. Yeah. The the only the only. Um, area that would affect them would be the ownership of the three lift stations that are out in their area. Right. And those lift stations, I learned, have meters on there that North Cooch needs to... Well, that's one of the reasons that they want those lift stations within the North Cooch. Based on those lift stations. That was one of the arguments I heard. Councilor Pearson, did you have anything you wanted to add? Okay. Further discussion then? Place the question on the resolution? Aye. No. Aye. No vote yes. There being four for the adoption of the resolution and one against, the motion carries and the resolution is adopted. Thank you. That was tough. Item number six is to approve the orders to file in district court, the 9th Judicial District, on matters of uh, hazardous houses at uh, 516 9th Street, 2031 3rd Avenue East, and 301 Memorial Drive. City Attorney. Mr. Mayor, Council, uh, we've been working on all of these, all three of these, for actually several years uh, you know, without success. Uh, and uh, I don't think there's any other alternative other than to move forward with an order. If these are passed uh, by the City Council, uh, we'll then have them served uh, uh, upon the owners. And in one case, uh, I think. Uh, True Stark uh, maybe has a mortgage on one of them, so they would be served as well. Uh, that gets the uh, time frame running. Uh, if they don't uh, take uh, corrective action or uh, file an answer uh, in district court disagreeing with the order, uh, then uh, we have the right uh, when that 60 days has gone by to uh, go in and take action to uh, uh, remove uh, the hazardous buildings uh, and add the cost of that to the tax rolls. There also are, I think it's the next thing down, there's a couple other uh, that are similar, just a little earlier in the process. We've written letters, we've been talking uh, uh, with these people for quite some time. Correction's not been done, uh, and so. Uh, the uh, I've all actually already I think provided the city administrator with prepared proposed orders, uh, and those would occur at a future uh, council meeting. So there's there's uh, uh, three where the orders would be adopted tonight, hopefully, uh, and then two more uh, that the council will be looking at in the near future. Thank you. Your council's pleasure then with uh, approving the orders for. Um, clean up of those properties? I would move on all three to file in district court. Motion by Councilor Droba, second by Councilor Pearson to approve the orders uh, for the district court as outlined by the city attorney. Discussion? Question? Aye. 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 I'll vote yes, motion is carried and the orders are approved. Thank you. 
As the city attorney pointed out, uh, item number seven is similar in that it authorizes the city attorney to proceed with the blight enforcement and approves the orders to file in district court for the property at 1621 First Avenue West and at 1618 Third Avenue West. And I would make the motion to approve orders to file in district court on both. Second. Second by Councilor Briggs. Aye. 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 Yes, motion is carried and uh, authorization and approval is given for the orders to uh, be filed with the district court. Thank you. Item number eight under uh, new business is to consider a letter of intercept agreement between the Little Fork Ambulance Service and the International Falls Ambulance Service. Chief Manasa. Thank you, Mayor. Councilors, um, the letter of intercept agreement between Little Fork Ambulance and I Falls is uh, a very similar agreement that we've signed with the Virginia Fire Department about six months ago, I believe we did that. Uh, we actually very much stole their document, so to speak, and made it fit for us. Uh, this is a situation that does not come up often on the ambulance service, but uh, case in point is that it outlines a fee schedule should we have to have shared services whether it be one of our paramedics assist them on a run or we gather their patient and take over the run. Either way, we have fees in place uh, one way or the other. Um, that's non-questionable. Uh, the advantage to this agreement is that Little Fork and ourselves both use the same billing service. So if this is approved, it would be filed with the billing service and it uh, makes working day-to-day uh, -day operations very easy should this situation occur. Our billing agent would know exactly how to handle that and what, how the fee transfer would be handled. Um, again, I can't reiterate enough, this is not a common occurrence between the two ambulance services, although we did have a situation probably a month ago where this in place would have, would have been handy. Uh, we, did, uh, we did come up with a mutual agreement between the ambulance services and then we also enacted this, this uh, intercept agreement so we have it on paper with no questions to follow should it be, a, should it be adopted. Council's pleasure then with the letter of intercept agreement between the Little Fork Ambulance and the International Falls Ambulance Services. So moved. Motion by Councilor Pearson to approve. Second. Second by Councilor Droba. Discussion or questions for the Chief. Please. I would just indicate that uh, back to uh, the city of Little Fork and their clerk administrator. They were in agreement with the agreement as drafted. Good, thank you. Further discussion? Uh, the only thing I'd like to add is I do foresee in the future us having a very similar agreement with Orr Ambulance as well as Cook and then uh, south on 53 beyond Virginia's uh, reach, so to speak. Uh, that is a common traveled path for us, so there is possibility of us uh, using this agreement with other services as well. So we're going to reach out and uh, update some of our mutual aid agreements we have in place and also send this along with it. Well, there's, there's a process and a fee schedule for handoffs. Correct. No further discussion? Question? Aye. 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 I would vote yes. Motion is carried. The letter of intercept agreement is approved. Thanks, Thank Chief. You. Item number nine is uh, also uh, with the ambulance department, uh, and that's to the purchase of one Hamilton T1 ventilator package for $16,444.26 and four Med System 3 infusion pumps equipment uh, at the cost of $12,530. 
Thank you, Mayor. Um, this was our in our budgeting process last year. These were the items we budgeted for capital purchases here in the ambulance. Uh, this is something we've been looking at for a while. Uh, the Hamilton T1 ventilator. Let me back up just a little bit here. We do. We currently have four ambulances and we have three vents, so we needed to get a fourth ventilator uh, to to handle transfers, especially care transfers. When we were doing the research on the ventilators, uh, the paramedics identified one of the problems we had with the ventilators we currently run. They're not a long distance or a long duration vent. They're really made for transporting from one section of a hospital to another, not necessarily in an ambulance for two to three hours. So this is more um, more capable and more adept for our, our use in a, a long distance transfer to Bemidji or Duluth. Um, we've seen these vents, uh, a lot of the flight services use them. They're, they're very good and they're made for transportation. They're, they're a little more hardier built. Uh, there's a lot of advantages on the Hamilton. On the Med System 3 infusion pumps, currently when we take a transfer out of our hospital, we also take an IV pump from the hospital to on the transfer with us. And it's not always just one, depending on the patient or the situation, it could be up to three pumps. So if we're sending out one transfer, we're robbing them of three pumps for six to seven hours. Uh, same thing if we send out another transfer, we're using their pumps. So this would keep, keep the infusion pumps in the ambulance ready to go. These are also three channel pumps, meaning they can run three different lines. So in the situation of us taking three of their pumps, uh, we can run three different meds in one infusion pump. There's also calculations or a built-in uh, calculator inside these for medical delivery for, for uh, medicine so that the calculation, manual calculation is taken out of it so it makes it a little more user-friendly and lessens the likelihood of mistakes. Um, takes a little ease off on the medics on, on a critical care transport. Uh, I did bring with me paramedic <laughs> Stefan Tweet. If you have any questions, on, I will be honest when it comes to the Hamilton and the infusion pumps. I know the bare minimum. Uh, any technical questions should probably be sent his way. But uh, I, from all the medics, they are in support of both of these items. They think it's uh, good money spent. And uh, like I said, this was budgeted last year for this year's purchase. So it's a pleasure then with uh, the purchase of the ventilator and uh, the med system infusion pumps. Second. Motion by Councillor Pearson to approve. Second. Second by Councillor Grova. Discussion. Chief. Councillor Grova. Uh, Chief, if this was in this year's budget, why are we buying it so late in the year? We wanted to wait and see. Uh, we had some discussions. Obviously, we know we're doing our um, evaluation with Mr. Metro. Uh, we we kind of, in lack of a better term, kicked the can down the road a little ways to see where we're at, and we're just getting to the point where we need to purchase them. Um, we did, uh, again, our finalized budget uh, that I saw did not come out till the end of March, so we were, we were waiting to see where we were at there, That's what good. we're allotted. Other questions or discussion? If not, question. Aye. 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 Asked to be excused for the next item, and I'll come back. My mother's in the hospital. Oh. I really need to take it. Sure. Thank you. I'll be back after. Thank you. Uh, there being uh, five four and none against, the motion carries on the uh, purchase of the ventilator and the uh, infusion pumps. That is approved, thank you. Thank you, uh, Paramedic Tweet, for being here with us. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we'll go to item 10 on the, uh, under new business, and that's to consider revisions to the Joint Powers Agreement for the Recreation Commission and authorized signatures and agreement for the Athletic Director. Mr. Mayor. Please. As the, uh, the Recreation Commissioner, I will uh, move forward the updated joint powers agreement. Motion by Councilor Droba to adopt the revisions to the joint powers agreement and the joint powers agreement authorizing signatures. Second. And, and second by Councilor Pearson. The administrator, do you want to uh, outline any of the changes? I would just indicate 
point out that the most important change was on the bottom of page three regarding finances of the commission, and it just reads that the uh, an audit of income and expenditures for an agreed upon procedures engagement shall be performed as required by law and then included in the City of International Falls audit engagement, meaning our auditor would perform that work, but it'll be at the expense of the Recreation Commission. That's the principal reason of this from a previous. I included a copy of the Office of State Auditor requirements on, on when an audit. Okay, thank you. Questions or discussion with regard to the agreement? And the um, athletic director agreement uh, that that would be between the City of International Falls and School District 361? It's, uh, it's actually between the Recreation Commission and the School District. Here is that this is included for doesn't require council action, and I believe that's based on uh, comments that uh, recreation provided after conversations with the city attorney. City attorney, Mr. Mayor, uh, Council. Uh, uh, Bill Mason did come and, and meet with me about this. Uh, it's it's really a gray area. Uh, I, I think if you look at the agreement and, and this agreement uh, uh, that being revised in, in technical matters, nothing of substance has really changed. Uh, and if you look at section two uh, on page one, Recreation Commission shall have power to operate a program of public recreation as a joint agent of the city and the school district. Um, and then later in the agreement, it calls for uh, having a, a recreation director. Uh, I feel fairly confident that when this arrangement was originally made years ago, uh, it wasn't contemplated that the recreation director would be performing athletic director duties for the school district. Um, the uh, you know, Mr. Mason pointed out that you know, on all the other employees, that's a matter of the Recreation Commission does it, uh, and the city isn't involved. It's just uh, something that the Recreation Commission does, and I would agree that that's correct. You know, I think the position of Recreation Director itself is in a different status, and, and that's the only position that's referred to uh, in the. Uh, uh, Joint Powers Agreement. Uh, there's also uh, uh, a review uh, that's supposed to take place in April with regard to performance and salary. Uh, and um, I, there's nothing uh, that uh, uh, necessarily a require in the Joint Powers Agreement that requires uh, this city to sign off on this and, and Mr. Mason pointed out to me that you know there's three representatives uh, of the City Council on the Recreation Commission and they unanimously seem to support going forward with this uh, and uh, so what I suggested to him was is that uh, it may not necessarily require uh, approval of the City Council uh, but I thought it would be more appropriate if the city council provided input uh, with regard to this because I, I think it certainly expands and significantly alters what the joint powers agreement envisioned previously. Uh, and uh, you know, I, I think it's it's something for discussion, uh, and uh, uh, you know I would suggest that the that the city council, uh, uh, you know, if they uh, feel it's appropriate, it, it could it could move forward uh, just the way everything's drafted, uh, you know, or uh, uh, if the city council feels that uh, you know it needs more discussion, uh, then. Uh, could go back to the uh, Recreation Commission in the, in the school district uh, uh, and suggest that there be, you know, more discussion uh, about it. Uh, uh, it. 
it, it certainly changes uh, in a significant respect uh, what uh, the uh, Joint Powers Agreement originally envisioned. It, and this revision uh, of the Joint Powers Agreement does not in any way address uh, the uh, Recreation commission, Commissioner doing these things. So I, I think that, you know, it's, it's probably more appropriate that there be some type of amendment to the Joint Powers Agreement that contemplates that that Recreation Director may be, you know, performing other duties that, that he's, that they're compensated for directly by the school district, because uh, it is a pretty significant change. Uh, but. I guess then, let's see, do we, yeah, we have a, we have a motion and a second, so yes, Councilor Drobo. I'm going to go a little off subject on here, but I'm going to try to stay within the bounds of the conversation. I, I think that there is a little bit of a loss for the city um, when the recreation director, and I'm going to use that, not, not the name, because it's the position that I, that gets a little bit skewed. If before those services were were tasked out to the school district we put in half the money and the school district put in half the money to provide services for recreation for the for the community and the school district and the, and the school, did, but it was the school sports. It was the rec sports. It wasn't senior high sports. It wasn't any. It was it was eighth eighth grade and younger. Essentially, is what the rec rec commission. Um, adults. There are adult programs also. Right. Um, but that that's what the city and the school district put the money in for, and now there's an additional fee or cost an additional fee for the school district to get a discounted athletic director, but the same hours in the day. So now we get less recreation director for our money because there's additional fees that are or additional duties that are coming in for additional money from the school district. So we're not getting the same hours in the day for the specific job task of rec director as what we did five years ago or before we had it. And I understand the need and why we did it, and I actually have no issue with the way that that the process has went. It's just we have to be very knowledgeable as a, as a city council that we are getting less for our money, and the school district is getting more, um, more services, but they are paying more money for that. You disagree? Uh, because of the discussions we had leading up to that, there were a number of duties that were turned over to his secretary that's, you know. We're not, we're not getting any less out of Bill. Is more of the stuff that the uh, everyday things that he was doing has been turned over to a school district administrative assistant. So they picked up a lot of the, and that was the discussion we had when we, we're negotiating how we were going to set up this whole process. So, so recreation commissioner, school district admin assistant for okay. scheduling and a lot, a number of other things. So that that's how we came to an agreement on the, on the the amount of money that we were going to get from the school district and what duties were going to move over to that person versus what Bill was doing. Fair enough, and that was before I got on the yes. rec commission, so yes. it's pieces that I had missed as well. So we actually had more man hours. Fair enough. Or woman hours. Right. I guess the, my, and my questions are not with regard to the time or the duties or the responsibility, but, it, but it's the governance issue. And I don't know if I can maybe go to the board here. You get blue. I started something with the, the board. I, I don't know. Did the red work? Huh? Did the red one work? Yeah. yeah. Oh. Oh. The school district 361 and the city of International Falls come together under a joint powers agreement and they create that agreement, a rec commission. Now, if you're going to change the provisions of that joint powers agreement, which I believe I heard you say, 
how does the recognition down here that was created by the Joint Powers Agreement get to make that decision and not these two here? Well, Mr. Mayor, it's, it's really a question, and, and like I say, it's a gray area. Uh, I can't sit here and definitively uh, say, but it, it appears, certainly an argument can be made uh, that this changes the nature of the joint powers agreement and that it was never contemplated when this agreement was entered into and, and it doesn't seem to be contemplated, you know, other than it's been contemplated uh, by the Recreation Commission that these duties would be added or shifted. Um, but it, th th there's no way in the uh, defining powers of the Recreation Commission, you know, it says, the Recreation Commission shall have power to operate a program of public recreation as joint agent of the city and the school district. Uh, there's nothing about the recreation director taking on uh, these athletic director uh, duties uh, that uh, is included in here. And, and I, I would say to be, you know, on the other hand, there's nothing in here that necessarily says uh, that this is contrary, you know, to the to the uh, joint powers agreement. Um, you know, I think arguments can be made on, on, on both sides. Uh, and with any other employee of the Recreation Commission, uh, not be involved. I mean, this, the, the Recreation Commission, once they have their members, they operate and they make the day-to-day -day decisions, you know, on uh, employees and compensation and all those other things. Uh, I think that the Recreation Commissioner uh, is, uh, at least theoretically, in a special category because that position is specifically referred to in the Joint Powers Agreement. It, it also uh, talks in terms of uh, a, uh, a committee uh, looking at performance and looking at compensation in April of each year. Uh, and I don't know uh, whether in April of this year when when the performance of the Recreation Commissioner and the compensation, if this whole issue of then, you know, moving on and taking on the additional responsibilities of, of the athletic director, those may have been discussed and, and uh, may be a part of this and, and it may be, you know, I, I, I don't necessarily think on its face there's a problem going forward as approved uh, and approving both of these uh, motions, uh, you know, or, or approving the agreement even though uh, based upon the Recreation Commission, the action they took, they did not believe it required City Council approval. Uh, uh, you know, there's nothing in the Joint Powers Agreement that definitively says uh, that it requires City Council approval. I think the better posture going forward would, even if this is approved, would be to add some language to the Joint Powers Agreement that includes this whole sharing of uh, athletic director duties by the Recreation Commission and taking all those things in. I mean, I think everybody moving forward, I'm assuming, you know, that they all thought they were acting in the best interest of the community, whether it be the city, the school district, or, or the Recreation Commission. And I think everybody's well intended. Uh, but I, I think some expansion of the Joint Powers Agreement uh, would be in order uh, to contemplate and authorize what's what's happening here to avoid any any question about it uh, that being said there's there's certainly nothing and if you look at uh, the contracting agreement I think number three uh, does say talk about uh, as school district 361 the secretary would be employed to take on a number of those duties that the recreation director previously did so I mean I, I think there does appear to have been some contemplation of shifting of duties uh, and um, you know it's yeah, there's it, it, not a clear right or wrong here uh, I think it's just a sense of uh, what the council feels uh, moving forward if they're comfortable uh, that their three members uh, uh, on the Recreation Commission uh, have considered these things and they're moving forward with it you know I, I, I don't think that it necessarily requires uh, the approval uh, of the uh, city council, uh, but you know, I think it perhaps would have been a better process in hindsight uh, to 
uh, have altered uh, the joint powers agreement going forward to allow this type of thing uh, and then leave that decision to the Recreation Commission. But well, Mr. Let me, um, and I don't want to drag on the meeting, but I, I do want to make one further point. Several years ago, the, uh, the city made a decision not to have a uh, position of water commissioner when someone retired. We didn't fill the position. We gave the duties to the street commissioner and water commissioner. The street commissioner also has duties over the parks, taking care of all of the playgrounds and parks in the community, which are used by, and the ball fields and everything that are used by the Recreation Commission. So in doing away with that uh, position, um, if the city had decided that uh, they wanted to have the recreation director also be the park commissioner and given him a uh, employee from the street department to help maintain the parks, but he would be responsible for making sure that all the parks were in good shape and uh, taking care of the playgrounds and the ball fields and so forth. Could the city have just went to the rec commission and said, this is what we're going to do and have the rec commission approve that? Well, they certainly could have tried. That appears to be the approach the school district is taking here. My, my guess is that then that would be bringing questions from the school district. Uh, you know, I mean, again, uh, uh, they're in, in either situation, I mean, there they're, they're isn't anything in the Joint Powers Agreement that specifically prohibits that. Uh, but I think in either your example or what's happening with the Recreation Commission seems to be an expansion of the Joint Powers Agreement in, in what was originally contemplated. And I would agree with that. The, uh, you know, the, the Rec Commission is a product of a Joint Powers Agreement. It's not a legislative body making a decision on a Joint Powers Agreement. I don't see where the, uh, I disagree that the uh, um, Rec Commission has the power to take and change the Joint Powers Agreement in any fashion. I think it only can be done by the two bodies up there. I would agree that changes to the Joint Powers Agreement can only be made by the city uh, and the school district. They, they weren't. They, they it was approved well. by the Rec Commission and it was put into the Joint Powers Agreement. I just, to me, it was improperly done. Well, and 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 I don't I don't necessarily disagree with you. You know, I, I think in defense of the Recreation Commission, they probably didn't think of it in the context of we're changing the joint powers agreement you know i think it was looked at you know we're altering the duties that our recreation commissioner a recreation director does i mean I, I i i think everybody was well intended in the steps that they took uh, and on the face of it uh, it they weren't they didn't believe they were clearly changing the joint powers agreement i think the more close you look at it and you, and you look at other examples with it going the other direction, you know, as, as you've pointed out, uh, then it does appear to be a change in the joint powers agreement. And, and uh, but again, I, I, I think it's uh, a gray area, uh, uh, and I, I, I think uh, the better approach would be to have the city council and the school district clarify the joint powers agreement so that this sharing of additional duties by the recreation commissioner is authorized by both entities and that would in my mind be the, the better way to do it uh, well, well I think at a minimum the city needs to be a signer to that agreement I'm not against the athletic director and and the, the commingling of the duties at all that, that I don't care. I think it's worked very well. I, I just think it has been done improperly in terms of governance. Can't we, can't we well, I think you're. I, Drova. I, I just want to clarify what was just said because I want to make sure that I leave this meeting and go to the next rec board meeting and have this information correctly. We've spent the last year, legitimately the last year of, uh, of the rec board, going through the joint powers agreement and making changes left and right and just kind of seeing what works for the commission. Is, is it your legal opinion that the rec board should not be the ones making the changes to the joint powers agreement, that it should be going back up from the rec board 
to the school district and city with just the members of the school district in the city having the discussion of the joint powers agreement? I'm saying no. And I, and I make recommendations. And, and I say absolutely yes. That, that's what I, I heard you I, say. I, that's I think the way it works is the Recreation Commission can say, we recommend these changes. Like we're doing with the charter. We got a Fair charter enough. commission makes recommendations to the city council on changes they would like to make, and then the city council acts on them. I think the same thing here, recreation commission, because they're dealing with it day to day. The city council and the school, they don't know the details of the ins and outs. So I think both bodies would welcome recommended changes, but those changes themselves can only take place between the two principals to the agreement. I appreciate that. that. Yes. But I don't want this city council sitting down with the school board and working out uh, amendments to this. I think Why? because I'm not equipped to sit down. I haven't been on the rec commission for a while. I look to you and Brian and Bob to think about this and bring forward your changes in this vehicle and that we look at that. I don't want to be negotiating with the school district over what belongs in this personally. It's at the rec commission level, you bring the recommendations. I agree with what you're saying. I just, you know, I mean, well, that's how we got to that. That's what the, the city reps on the commission and where the school board reps is how we came up with it. ultimately comes all of back this. to us to approve it. Right. Yes. And so that's where yeah. we're at. So that's why I thought we yeah. were the attorney. We were supposed if, to do is rec commission. If, if I could propose the. I agree. If I could propose a compromise uh, as a way to do this without any hard feelings or anything else, is if the council's in favor of the agreement, e even though as presented it doesn't require the city council to sign off on it, we could approve, pass a resolution approving this uh, new contract with the ath athletic director and saying, you know, the city is willing to sign off on this agreement, but then also suggest that we, moving forward, rather than adopting the new joint powers agreement, uh, that uh, there be some new language added going forward so that it contemplates, because this thing with the athletic director, once we start, it's probably going to go on indefinitely. Uh, so why not put that in the joint powers agreement? I don't think we necessarily need to delay the athletic director helping, helping the recreation director helping out and because school is about to start we've got you know games and different things going on so let's just let the recreation commission know that you know we think the city should have been officially consulted in this because it really is a change to the joint powers agreement but we approve everything we, we've done uh, we uh, agree to move forward uh, with this agreement uh, but let's before we adopt the revised joint powers agreement let's amend uh, the general policies uh, uh, and the description of what the recreation director does to contemplate this type of thing uh, so we, we don't slow it down uh, but yet the city council is participating in the process to the extent that the council feels is appropriate. I make a motion. Well, we've, got a motion. A, we've got a motion to approve the joint powers agreement at this point. Do, so do you want, do we want to take and... I would call the question. <laughs> well, and I guess, do we, do we want to take and hold up on the joint powers agreement? We can approve the athletic director agreement separately and, and uh, until such time as uh, we get some change in the joint powers agreement. All right. So can we table the motion on the on the uh, joint powers agreement? And then motion to the table would, would be proposed to move to approve this contract on the athletic director. And then I don't think it takes a motion, but refer back to the. The, uh, to the Recreation Commission that they modify this for final approval by the two bodies to recognize the fact that there's a missing piece here that the athletic director contract needs to be in. And this will reflect that and we're not delaying the contract either. Because I don't think we want to, I guess what I'm hearing is do we want to approve a joint powers agreement that's missing a vital piece or a big piece? Well, it's Maybe not missing not. it. It's already in there, but it was put in there, I think. It's not in there. It says an addendum. 
Well, I know, but but the, there's also in the in the wording of the Joint Powers Agreement, there's a piece that says that that it's uh, athletic director is in there. Where? I think that was. I thought that was the whole issue. But. I, I don't, Mr. Mayor, I, I don't think currently the Joint Powers Agreement, as proposed, refers to the athletic director at all. It just talks about the recreation director and, and his duties. So to incorporate the athletic director functions of the recreation director, this document needs to be updated. The Joint Powers Agreement is missing that piece. Isn't that the objection? Yep. So... I would table the motion that's on the table. Or make a motion to table. I'm making a motion to table. Okay. We have a motion to table by, uh, which is always in order, um, by Councillor Jackson. Is there a second to the motion to table? Second. Second by Councillor Pearson. Discussion. Mr. Mayor, if I could. Yeah. If this was a problem and this particular piece of it was a problem, this was not addressed at the last meeting. We addressed specifically at the last meeting when we talked about the um, about the joint powers agreement. We were worried about the who's going to pay for the audit. Um, and, and this particular piece did not come up a, as an issue or else this could have been a, uh, addressed last month. Um, we are working off of a calendar year uh, starting in July and now we're at our August meeting having, having the discussion again. Um, so then that pushes out to the next rec board meeting which gets this to our September meeting to finalize. I. I think that there's problems with the joint powers agreement. The last thing I want to do is just push it through just for the sake of time. But these are the, this is the same type of joint powers agreement that we have had for the last three years. And we've, we passed it last year, we passed it the year before. I would suggest that we pass it this year and we move forward by knowing that we have two entities that need to have a conversation about what our recreation board looks like and what our joint powers agreement looks like. That's just just my thoughts on it. Question on the motion to table. Question. No. No. Yes. Yeah. I would vote yes. The uh, joint powers agreement is tabled. Conversation. I, I think it would be appropriate on the action the table. It might be appropriate to have the city attorney propose some language that can be incorporated into the joint powers agreement, so that the there's a. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion. That we approve the contract, the athletic director, and the recognition. So, motion by Councilor Jacksaw that we approve the athletic director services uh, contract, contract and with the school district? I guess the school district and the rec commission and the city. Okay. Thank you. Is there a second to that motion? Would second the motion. Discussion. Okay, at, at risk of making this the longest meeting we've ever had. Um, we passed at the rec commission level a to to accept the agreement with the um, athletic director in. Contingent, uh, contingent on the information from the city attorney and the information yes. that got back to Bill the way that I got the information was that it was a gray area it didn't need to be signed 
and I as the recreation uh, president have already signed that agreement and it's filed downstairs. That's fine, all we're doing is adding the city to the agreement. Fair enough, I just want to make sure that everyone is aware that it, it has already been That's signed. What I time. understand your motion right. is. You know, I just tried this to. Fair enough, I just wanted to make sure that there oh, wasn't sorry. anything being hid, that it's already been signed and filed. This is just adding the city to the agreement and, and some wording <clears throat> some wording can be added to the joint powers agreement the city attorney would draft. And then, in September, we'll look at a joint power commission agreement that includes that language for the athletic director and we won't be discussing this ever again. Well, next year, Mr. Mayor, please. I, I just want to clear because I think the public is going to think this is something new. This this has been we did this three years ago. We we sat down three years ago and negotiated this out, and then and we've been operating under this way for three years. So it's just a matter of cleaning up some loose ends is what we're doing. If I understand it right. That's how I feel. Commissioner Mayor, I, I would agree that it's a technicality. Uh, and I think uh, nobody uh, uh, wants not to move forward with the agreement and, and the sharing of the recreation director with the athletic director. My only point, and I, I, I've never been asked about it before, and I don't know that I was ever even aware it was what was occurring, was that, you know, it, as a lawyer legally reading this joint powers agreement, uh, is that sharing contemplated? And my answer is no. And so the better way, and, and I don't have any problem, it doesn't need to wait till September, we can do it at the next meeting here in August, uh, and I can have some proposed, I think you could even approve the joint powers agreement, uh, subject to the city attorney recommending some language that uh, incorporates the concept of sharing the, the recreation director with the school district and the athletic director. I mean, I think everybody's in agreement that it happened, but when I'm asked the question, does is it contemplated by this joint party? The answer is no. Uh, and so let's, we don't need to change what we've been doing. Let's just correct our joint powers agreement so it accurately reflects what's going on. And I, I, I don't like being overly legal. I, you know, it's more my style to let's not sweat the small stuff. Let's just get it done and keep everybody on board and happy. And, and you know, I apologize if I've thrown a monkey wrench into anything. And if I, uh, you know, what I'm saying today is, is somewhat different than what I said to Bill in my office. And, and so, you know, I apologize. But as I've looked at this, you know, and thought about it more, you know, I've arrived at my opinions today. And, and I don't think we need to change anything. Uh, I think on this particular contract, let's have the city sign off on it. Don't change any word, just add the city. And moving forward, after this has changed next year, you won't need <laughs> the city to sign this agreement. It would be strictly between the Recreation Commission and the school district. But but I think for right now, uh, you know the the and I. It's something we should have done the last couple of years in changing uh, this joint powers agreement or approving the, the new language, but this particular subject never came up, so it didn't get addressed, so. Okay. Okay, we have the motion then to approve the um, agreement with the school district and the Recreation Commission having the city sign off on the athletic director services. Question? Aye. 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 I would vote yes. Motion is carried. Agreement is approved. Thank you. Go to item number 11 under new business, and that's the Human Resource Committee recommendation to approve holiday pay for the EMTs and paid on call firefighters July 4th, effective September 1st, 2018. Mr. Mayor. Please. Mr. Chair of the HR, I will make this motion. Motion by. Councillor Jackson, second by Councillor Briggs to approve the holiday pay for the EMTs and the paid on call firefighters. Right. And now I'm having second thoughts about this whole thing, but I did feel that I needed to make the motion. All right? All right. Um, yeah. First of all, we don't, when we're looking at this, if we're going to have holiday pay for EMTs and paid on call, we're going to have to have holiday pay for casual paramedics too. It's just a matter of time. Uh, 
Mr. Rader. I agree with that comment, and it would be easy enough to, the casual paramedics could be included and should be included. They happen to be working on one of the recognized. Now, my other cold feet on this is that I don't know. I, I, I guess I need to hear from Adam again because I think there were the chief that there were some issues with getting those slots scheduled and so we were suffering in the ambulance department in particular on holidays to have coverage correct, correct. okay so we were going to pay holiday pay with the idea that this would resolve that problem my issue is that in any normal well, when you have casual part-time employees, normally in a business, you don't pay holiday pay. They're there to cover those holes. It isn't something that is a recognized, it's just unusual to have that kind of a benefit. It seems to me that we're going down the path of involving ourselves in almost contract negotiations without any representation here on their side. So I just think I'm not real comfortable with doing it this way. And therefore, I'm having cold, it's the other, and then also, I'm concerned, we, we don't have the cost study back yet from the consultant we hired to look at the ambulance service. And I'm hesitant to change the cost structure before we look at that study. I think we're a little premature. Make any changes right now. And if you look at, I mean overall my big concern is since December of 2016 we have a significant deficit that's only growing in the ambulance. And so we're looking at that cost structure from the um, consultants and we have some other pay issues going on there as well so I just I, I'm just thinking it's a very piecemeal approach to take at this point that really we need to step back a minute that may be that we still do it but I'm having cold feet on this now I thought we discussed it enough in committee that well the, the reasons for it and everything else and we're not giving them holiday pay that they get paid if they're not working it's only that we've agreed that we'll pay them time and a half for the hours they work on that holiday, right. and which we, is is not much different than industry or anywhere else. For casual part-time people? Yeah. You work it. You can get it. If you work it, you yes. get time. Yeah. You know, I have people that are part-time that, that I that I pay, you know, when they work a holiday, I pay them time and a half. But they're I don't, permanent part-time. You know, part -time. there's, there's the, the permanent, regular people, don't work it they still get paid for not working but the permanent part-time people might get paid for that holiday pay but we're talking about people that are casual here Private permanent part-time yes employees, the emt employees as well as the casual paramedics and I've, I've been informed that summer seasonal temporary employees actually get time and a half on for they work holiday. if they work on the they're working it, right which is they're working it they're not if you know industry is is doing it that way these uh, employees uh, of the city are not covered by a union contract they're not and we're, we find ourselves engaged in really um, pay adjustments and things that we discussed in committees to help relieve some of the full-time people that are kind of getting burnt out because the part-timers if they're not going to get the time and a half for working all day they don't take the call so it's forced on the full-time person and we're burning them out i don't have a problem if they're if, with anybody working a holiday getting the time and a half period i don't have any problem with that all right. i think the question uh, maybe before us then is uh, and for the chief should casual paramedic be listed also? I believe they should. Contract side, uh, casual paramedic alongside a full-time paramedic in the situation.
holiday pay, that full-time paramedic always has the option of working that shift first. That's their union right to do that. So I think have that option of bumping that shift out should they choose. But if you have to schedule in a casual on a holiday, then if if we add them to this motion, they would then also receive that holiday pay for working on that day. I think so. But they would not get it if they are not working. Correct. Well, yeah, I, that was never contemplated that they right. would I, get I, I, I agree with you. I Pay on the union side refers to I guess to the maker of the motion and the second, would you want to add casual paramedic to the um, EMTs and paid on call firefighters? Or does that make well to be that, consistent? Does I that make your feet colder? To, huh? Does that? <laughs> yeah, it does. I find myself in a rather untenable position. You I felt to retract your motion and all make I the motion. That, I felt that as HR person who was present at all these, I had the duty to bring this motion forward. So here I am. At the very least, we need to be consistent, and so I would add casual paramedic to that motion. Second. Okay. Thank you. All right. We will uh, add casual paramedics. Further discussion? Yeah. I would just point out that the type of output, one and a half percent, that should be one and a half times the regular rate of our typo in the. Okay. Uh, one and a half percent. Times. Yeah. It should be one and a half times and not one and a half. It's time and a half pay. So it's time and a half pay. Thank you. Further discussion on the resolution? Question. Hi. Aye. Aye. <laughs> yes, motion is carried. Resolution is adopted. Holiday out. pay is approved. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Nothing's easy tonight. Item number 12. <laughs> Budget and Finance Committee recommendation naming the contingent fund of the mayor and the council the standard expenditure res reimbursement account and setting the annual reimbursement account amounts effective January one of 2019. Presently, the mayor is at $700 a year, and the that would move to a thousand. And the councilors are at $500 a year, and that would move to 700. That's correct. I'll move. Motion by Councilor Jackson. I'll second. Second by Councilor Droba. Discussion. Question. Hi. Hi. Um, Excuse me? No. No? Thank you. Aye. And I would vote yes. There being four for the motion and one against, motion carries. And the change of the name and the amounts effective January 1st are approved. Thank you. Item number 13, the Public Works Committee recommendations. Item A, approve designating home lane a school zone and installing signs with reduced 20 mile an hour speed limit. And that would be between 14th Avenue and 11th Street. So moved. Motion by Councilor Droba. Second. Second by Councilor Briggs. And I'm gonna ask the Street Commissioner, is the 20 mile an hour speed limit the correct amount, the correct speed limit? You can go. So it's, it's uh, setting it at 20 is a uh, possible option then. All right. Because I know we have one 15th Avenue at 15 miles an hour over by the grade school, and then 11th Street is at 20 miles an hour. And this would add home lane now at a 20 mile an hour area when children are present. Yes. Can you leave? I thought there was a, that we couldn't, that under, for certain streets in the city, we can't even go under 30, right? You can when you. Okay. 
but we just can't willy nilly go and change the speed limit. So I'm one of I'm coming back to the Riverview Boulevard issue where they wanted to drop it. Legally, we couldn't. Right. Unless you made it, unless it fit a school zone, but right. if there's no school yeah, there. Because there was a push to do that. And there's a lot of traffic from the school that travels down Home Lane. Yeah. Okay. Further discussion? Question? Aye. 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 I would vote yes. Motion is carried, and Home Lane will be. De be designated a school zone with a 20 mile an hour speed limit when children are present. Thank you. Item B is to approve the purchase of an advanced metering infrastructure from Core and Main for a fee not to exceed $65,000, a cost payable from the water and sewer fund capital outlay, and authorizing signatures. Been waiting all night. I would move for uh, purchase. Motion by Councilor Groba. Second. Second by Councilor Pearson. I think the, uh, it was explained in the uh, memo from uh, the Public Works Committee of why we would be moving to this and it should give better service to the citizens as the a new system with a antenna on the water tower on the city water tank on Industrial Avenue will be reading their water meter every four hours. So that should help us in um, where we having water running loose or coming out of uh, outside spigots or anywhere. Further discussion? Question? Aye. 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 Yes, motion is carried and approval for the purchase is approved. Thank you. Item number 14 is in addition to the Agenda, and that's to approve the establishment of a dog park committee with the mayor appointment of volunteer members and those members would be Brenda Sucker, Michelle Bockerman, Betsy Loop, Roger Jackson, Councillor Droba, and Councillor Jacksaw. Your pleasure with the establishment of that committee and those appointments. I'll move. Motion by Councillor Jacksaw. Second by Councilor Grover. Question. Or to look at the feasibility. It's not necessarily voting for the dog park. Well, this is approved establishment of a committee. Establishment <laughs> of a committee. Right. Not as approve a dog park. Well, I, okay, then I want to have a, a little bit of time to talk about the town hall and specifically how that played out. So we did have a town hall last Thursday. Um, we ended. We invited everyone in the community. We uh, we started the meeting by giving a rundown of the projects that the city is doing and making sure everyone was aware that one of the major priorities of the city was not a dog park. The priorities of the city's mo of the city moving forward is definitely going to be blight, the Highway 53 project, uh, street improvements, which we talked about earlier this evening. I'm sorry. No, we didn't talk about that uh, at all. And you were there. Um, so tonight we talked about that. So those those were the uh, the things that we discussed. That is on the city's radar. Number two, we t discussed uh, the upgrades of our parks uh, that we we've done in the last couple of years. Which is uh, we've upgraded our ball fields. We've uh, upgraded the rink at Eighth uh, Street. We've upgraded the rink at Cary Park, and we uh, did a huge remodel over at uh, Green Acres Park with the. Um, funds that were raised through Bacchus and the Minnesota Vikings Super Bowl uh, uh, commission. commission. So we've had a lot of upgrades at our park and that's what we're looking at for doing with this with the dog park is to upgrade a park that isn't getting the use that it needs. Uh, we then opened up the forum to um, all those that were present. There were uh, I don't have the exact number, but I'm going to say that there was roughly 20 people present. Yeah, the, the list, the counselors have the list. 
there was uh, um, people in the room that were against the dog park. There were people in the room that were for the dog park. We had a pros and cons that I put up on the board. Uh, we went through the pros, we went through the cons, we kind of talked about how they all worked. With the people in the room, I asked, with the information that's been given to you, if you were not to pick a location today, do you believe that there is a need for a dog park in our community? And correct me if I'm wrong, every hand in the room went up. Every hand, okay, one, I, okay, one person said no. So we ended up having a, a lot of people that came against the dog park. We had a lot of people that came for the dog park. After having discussion, a vast majority of the room said that there was a need for a dog park. Secondly, we went to locations and we had Riverview definitely had the most people that were here uh, at the meeting because the way that it was reported is we were looking at Riverview and any other possible location. So the people at Riverview definitely were concerned that it was gonna be in their location. We also brought up Cary Park as an option because the southernmost um, playground there has very old equipment. Uh, it also needs to be upgraded in some capacity. It has water, it has parking, it's next to the city loop. There was a lot of good points for that. The Donahue property was brought up. The uh, uh, Mr. Paul Beck's property on Keenan Drive was brought up. Carson Loopy was brought up and I believe there was another location I'm just not thinking of right now. We looked at all the locations, we came up with pros and cons. Some of the cons to the Donahue property and uh, Mr. Paul Beck's property was that we don't already maintain that property. So we kind of took that out because Public Works does not mow over there, they don't take care of it over there, and it's just not feasible. Although the location of Mr. Paul Beck's property was perfect. It's right on the city loop, you would be right there, but it didn't have parking. We also looked at at Riverview. Riverview is a great location for a handful of reasons. One of the reasons that was bad there is because it's uh, next to a river which was a issue for one person because of the safety concerns of being next to a river. Another issue that it had was parking. We started pinpointing things and it became very clear that the best option that we had was at Cary Park moving forward because it's a multi-use facility. Past that, in, in the room, I asked then, does everyone feel comfortable if we were to move forward with the Cary Park location? And again, a vast majority, in fact, I'm gonna go with 99% of the people in the room raised their hand and said that that would be the best location moving forward. Then we went to how are we gonna fund it? Because it was we wanna put it into the budget for next year. We had a discussion about uh, how much the fencing would cost. Then we had a discussion about how Ma Maple Grove had started a GoFundMe page to bring in amenities inside that fenced-in area. Uh, one of the, um, one of the uh, residents that came to the meeting that evening said, well, how do we really know how much we're gonna be spending on, on the equipment if we don't really know how much the equipment costs, so how much do we raise? It was a really good point. So then we kind of talked about it a little bit more and the conversation went to, why don't we form a committee of the people that are in this room? Granted, uh, four of the people that did sign up to be on the committee seemed to be for a dog park to begin with. Before we said we're not gonna take anybody else, I asked is there anybody in the room that was against the dog park coming in that would like to be on, on the committee? And everyone thought that it was a good idea the way we had it. So at that point, uh, Councillor Jaxa and myself went on to the committee to explore what kind of equipment we would wanna put into it. And everybody walked out of the meeting pretty upbeat and happy about how the situation had went down. Um, I think it was a fantastically good meeting. I think it is a um, testament to what we can do as a community when we have a town hall, when we have an open discussion without telling people what we're gonna do, but take people's ideas of how we're gonna institute some stuff. So um, that's how we got to this point tonight. Uh, if you guys have any questions, uh, it will, Councilor Jackson, myself, um, the city administrator and Mr. Jackson were all there at that meeting that evening, so. 
Just one question. What is the charge of the committee? The charge of the committee is basically going to look to see what equipment could go in, uh, what the feasibility is in that area, and uh, um, to come up with additional funding outside the city of International Falls so that we as direct taxpayers are not paying for all the things that are going in and we are just going to be paying for the fencing going around the, the dog park. So it would be establishing a dog park? Correct. But Or determining the cost of establishing a dog park? Correct. And looking at what the operational revenues might be? Correct. From other entities as well as in terms of fees? to examine the feasibility of all that so that when the council looks at this as part of the budget process, they can have, have some confidence. Right, and one of the things that was discussed that evening as well was uh, the dog permit fees in the city. They're um, relatively low. If we were to institute um, some of the high, uh, some higher, and I don't know what that dollar amount is right now, dogs are $4 in the city of International Falls. But if we were to uh, raise the dog fees a couple of dollars, we could put that funding into the maintenance of the dog park for any additional fees moving forward. Um, as of right now, it uh, it seemed like we went from having a lot of people in the community believing that this was the priority of the city, and this is not the priority of the city. This is upgrading our parks and recreation. Any further discussion? I can support having a committee uh, researching the costs and so forth because it'll come back to, to the council um, whether we go forth but I agree with your your point on uh, priority that uh, there's many other priorities ahead of the dog park mm -hmm. thank you further discussion question aye aye, aye. aye. I'll vote yes motion is carried dog park committee is approved thank you Item number 15 is to approve the appointment of Michelle Rasmussen as a casual paramedic for the International Falls Fire Rescue EMS Department, effective August 7, 2018. So moved. Motion by Councilor Droba. Second. Second by Councilor Pearson. Discussion? Mayor. Please. Um, I want to point out that the recommendation is to uh, the uh, paramedic as a casual part-time at the rate And I my cold feet a little bit. In the in the motion, I guess, uh, Councillor Droba, the motion to approve. Were you were you proposing the salary of twenty three thirty eight versus twenty two forty six? I hadn't given it much thought, to be honest with you. Um, at this point, I would take the recommendation of what uh, the city administrator had. Salary uh, would be t at twenty-two forty-six an hour, um, and uh, no step process. Yes. Okay. And to the second, the new acceptable. For questions or discussion? Chief. Uh, I guess I won't quite how to handle this as far as we could probably go back to committee, but one of the problems we ran into with the why we have a difference in pay, we had, we throughout the year why there's two differences in pay. So the contract for full time paramedics, they So that's why we show two different. 
think it needs to be addressed as even though they're non-union bargaining, do they get a 2% rate or whatever the contract is where they're hired? Back to a wage from how we lock that wage into place. And I I think, Mr. Mayor, I think that the motion should stand as amended and that we should bring back the question of how to deal with these changes. I don't disagree that they are non-bargaining employees, so they may not get the benefits that a unionized I That's a committee level. I, I, I think at this point tonight, do you want to delve into that? I don't. No. Oh, I think we should leave the motion as it stands, as amended. But thank you for your. Further discussions or questions, City Administrator. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I was just going to point out that you know it would be a topic that would be worthy by the Human Resources Committee. I'm not sure if we'll be prepared. So then we can have some preliminary comments. Thank you. Further discussion? Question? Hi. 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 I'll vote yes. Motion is carried. Appointment is approved with the uh, salary and no step process. All right, Mr. Mayor, oh. I'm rushing things along. Oh. Number Item number 16, grant permission for Midco, the provider of cable services in the community, second feed and origination point in the Bacchus Community Center Auditorium, and relinquish the right to install the feed at the municipal building. Councilor Jackson. Okay. So when we negotiated the contract with Midco with their franchise with the city four years ago now, we negotiated for two origination points, one at the back of studio and the second one to be determined. For, there was confusion on that that didn't get recorded correctly. I don't know if you can back me up on this, but we had really not determined where the second origination point needed to be. I already understood that the council did not want a set the origination point here. For some reason, it was written in the contract that way. Now, to get uh, Midco to move it, put the second one in the auditorium, they need assurance that the city council isn't going to come back and demand, as the contract is recorded, that they put one here. So they're looking for a release that origination point here that we don't want so that they can put one where we do want one which is in the Bacchus Auditorium. Is there a motion then to... Uh... So I'll make a motion that we uh, amend make a motion to amend the uh, franchise agreement to that the second origination point shall be at the Bacchus Auditorium and, and, and scratch out the City Hall. Okay. That's your motion that uh, the franchise agreement would be uh, advised to have second origination point at or the second feed in the origination point at the Bacchus Auditorium. And not the municipal vote as it's in the franchise agreement. Is there a second to that motion? Second. Second by Councilor Grove. Discussion. Please. I would just point out I believe that this is actually important moves forward, we'll do certified minutes to Midco so that they can be council took and then we'll probably have uh, proceed with
example, the franchise agreement is in the ordinance? It's chapter 13 of the city code, I believe. We have a, a uh, revision ordinance. That's correct. But because of the, the, the we, they are moving origination point for the studio down to the second floor over at Bacchus, and so it would be cost effective for them to be able to do this origination point in the theater now. So we don't have the luxury, if we're going to try to be cost effective for Midco, to wait until we actually have all the hearings. They're there working now. So you know, I just want the minutes provided to the attorney for Midco so that he's reassured that when they act to put the dollars in to move to add an origination point at Bacchus, that we're not going to come back at them and say, no, you've got to put them here. Under discussion, I guess the, the question I have is if, if you're moving to the second floor and the auditorium is on the second, also on the second no, floor. It's on the first floor. Well, part of the auditorium is on the second floor. So, I mean, couldn't an extension of the first one? I guess I'm just thinking of giving, I don't know what the what might happen with the municipal building ever. Um, well, I mean, the contract expires in six years. You can renegotiate or reopen if you want to, but... Uh, so I don't know enough about important. technology, but uh, can the technology, can an extension be put from the auditorium? It could be, but this is a second feed. I mean, uh, as I understand it, this is a second channel, right? It, no. No, second feed. Okay. It's a second origination point, which means we can accept data and send data from the auditorium or channel. So I've had the discussions with Midco's attorney. They need this in order for them to do this for us. Hey, we've been sitting here for four years with the right to two origination points and have been only using one. This is to resolve that issue and for them to get it in when they're also doing work over it. Now, I don't understand all the engineering on this, nor do I want to. But, you know, it... Uh, it seems to me like we're going to have two in the same place, that's all. No. City attorney. Uh, again, I don't know about the two in the same place issue, but I think to... Uh, accomplish what uh, Ms. Jack, Council Person Jax is proposing here, you know, I think we can do better to Midco assuring them that we are moving forward uh, to change the ordinance so that it, we wouldn't be requiring them to do it here and then we can follow up with that ordinance change. I mean, if there's going to be a significant difference in cost by having them do it now versus a month from now, uh, I think we could probably accomplish what she's seeking, you know, just with a letter of clarification and indicating that we are, since the uh, contract is in ordinance form, it's going to take us some time to do that, but that's in the process. And they would probably accept that, I'm assuming. Are we, are we looking at, are they looking at doing live feeds? Is that why it's in the auditorium? Because if not, I, I, and I, I don't understand. And it makes sense, kind of what you're saying, at least to me right now, because I don't understand. If you're putting an origination point, like you said, which is going to upload and download data 45 feet away from a place where you can upload and download data, unless you're doing a live feed in the auditorium, I don't understand the goal. Well, it must be a live feed then. You understand it better than I do. I just, I don't. I don't well, understand I, what the goal I, I is. I understand what Midco's attorney is asking me to do here tonight. He said in order, in order for them to do it, they have to have city council assure us that they meet the origination point requirement by putting it in the theater and we won't be asking for another one. It just seems like we're wasting a second, and I'm not... Well, we are not going to get it then if you guys don't agree well, to it. I, I, and, and thanks a lot. You know, I mean, we've worked hard over there at KCC-TV. The theater, or the, we think of it as a, I think of it as a theater, but there's many events over there that we could take advantage of and broadcast 
but we don't have an origination point in that room. This is well, I'm not up. the engineer. I'm not question what they need. I can't go and say. This was added to added to the agenda. Yeah, it came up on Friday night, so Friday late Friday afternoon. Further discussion, I guess. Question, question. Aye. Aye. No. Aye. No. There be, uh, being three for the motion and two against the Nothing further under new business, we'll go to the... No, oh, I have an item under any other business, number 17. Another item? Any other business, number 17. Okay, any okay. other business? Yeah, I do. I do, you know, I've been receiving some questions from the constituents of Center Ward as to the status of our counselor and I think I don't I understand that there's been a move in your household and so I think that there's been questions out there they need to be fully addressed at council to the public so they understand what your status is what the legal opinion is I you know um, you have you have moved I guess but not fully no not fully okay I think that um, it's out there that you have moved um, so I think we need to fully explore that because uh, is no is it only me that's getting questions from center ward constituents about where I have received a question on whether or not Councillor Peterson had it in had any intention of running for position but I have never been asked where she lives okay and I've been asked where she lives and if she can legally represent Center Ward. I am still there. Living in your house? Yes. In Center Ward? Yes. Okay. City Attorney. And this question was raised uh, to me by the City Administrator. Uh, person, uh, I want to say a month or two ago, uh, and I've rendered an opinion to them. Uh, the fact that they have, uh, that her family has bought some property outside the city uh, and is in the process of making a move. They still own the uh, uh, house uh, where she's been and uh, she's there and, and uh, not, uh, I mean, unless her current home, not the new home, but the home she's been in for years, uh, that were not to continue to be her home. It, it wouldn't be appropriate for her to run for re-election and, and represent the city, but as long as she is still there and that's considered her home, she has every right to continue to serve as a council person. Uh, she can tell you better than I what her intentions are moving forward, but I've given the opinion, as I understand the facts to be currently, uh, that she's appropriately continuing to serve on the council. That's your opinion, okay. Yep. And that is what I want to be public because there's discussion out there and it's to protect you as well. We've never had a full discussion at council about that issue, but it's been raised. Am I the only one? I'm still there. Okay, so you're, but I'm glad we've clarified that then because then I won't. So still our house, no. still living there? Nothing's changed. Good. Vehicles in front of the house every day I go to work, so I have to assume that she's still living there. That's fine. Then, then this is on public record, and I don't have to. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Further, under uh, uh, any other business? Hearing none, we'll move to uh, reports of boards, committees, and department heads. City Administrator. 
I have no report, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. City Attorney. Mr. Mayor, I have a sense I've already said too much tonight, so I will say nothing further. Thank you. <laughs> Chief Maston, please, thank you for being he so patient. He hasn't said anything. <laughs> <laughs> Tell now. Yes. You look at it. Here it <laughs> um, yeah, thanks, Mr. Mayor. So I have my uh, July activity report for the police department in your packets. Um, nothing, uh, nothing out of the ordinary to report. Um, we had a little bit of training last month with our consolidated response team. Obviously, we were busy around the 4th of July helping with the festivities and whatnot. Um, and Five hundred and nine calls for service last month. Uh, Two hundred and one of the traffic stops. Uh, Thirty-two citations were issued. We responded to nineteen medical assists, and we generated one hundred and four uh, incident reports last month. Numbers from last year, basically, pretty much the same. Nothing. Uh, nothing. Thank you, uh, Chief Maston. Questions for Chief Maston? You didn't bring up your night out. That's tomorrow. That's tomorrow. Yeah. yeah, well, I, you should that's advertise that's it. Tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. I yeah, think well, that's going to be great. Four to seven. Okay, Bear Park. Thank you for your report. Thank you for the uh, great work uh, around the, the holiday. Uh, I know that uh, officers were very busy and uh, hopefully they caught some fish at the fish pond. Further. Other questions for the uh, chief? Yeah, I do have something. Okay. I received a complaint, and this is about the fifth one, about um, dogs at large in the Riverview Boulevard area. So I told my constituent I would bring it up at council. I don't know what. They're looking for the dog park. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I just want to, I don't know how you, we proceed on that issue, you know, but um, well, it's been, it's been repetitive enough for me to just bring it up here at council. I told my constituent I would do that. No one's brought it up to me though, so. Well. You know, it's the first I've heard of it. Okay, really? So, well, yeah, obviously we have dogs that run around town. Yeah. Everywhere you go, there's an animal running around, around the city. Um, on the complaints, so we pick up those animals, you know, when if we were to try to catch every dog we see running around the city, we wouldn't have any. any Doggy jail would be full. I would tell your constituents if they have a new dog in in the area. To call you? Call. Yeah. Oh. Not to call me. To call the officer. <laughs> <laughs> an officer other than me will go catch that dog. <laughs> <laughs> Chief cell phone. I make mean, you. <laughs> I make you as a rep. You as the department. It's not. A, it's not an. Un, we as royal we. Right? It's not an uncommon uh, complaint. We do have that issue. No. And just as a follow-up, at the dog park conversation that came up, that the dogs already use River Riverview. Why would we want to fence them in? <laughs> so. Thank you. Thanks again, Chief. Go to Chief Manasa, Fire Rescue EMS report. That looks busy also. Thank you. I'll try and keep mine brief as well. Uh, for the month of July, we had uh, 10 fire department callouts. Five were city responses, five were rural. Uh, of course, we were busy with the 4th of July as well. And then uh, for our training and monthly meeting, uh, we looked at uh, the, the state plan for our relief association. So we we had somebody up from the, I don't know if he was League of Minnesota Cities, I don't remember now, uh, from the state faction anyway, uh, came up and discussed the state plan for our relief association. We're going to look into the details on transitioning to that and whether that's right for us or not. Uh, in the ambulance, we had uh, 73 911s, 43 transfers. For a total of 116 runs that brings our run totals up for 18 up to 818 runs and again we had our regular regular meeting and training and uh, we 
went through uh, our, our new shift rotation as well as our LAD tech system, so we're getting that up and running and making a go with that. Thank you, Chief Manasa. Questions for Chief Manasa? Good report. Thank you for being brief. And Commissioner Broca, do you have anything? Nothing to report this evening. Thank you. Thanks for being here. Reports of Mayor, Council Committees, Boards, and Commissions. I think uh, you have my written report. I would take and pass around to uh, councillors a uh, uh, from the Voyagers National Park and its award for the uh, and they have provided us a three coin uh, distinctive uh, set of the uh, new Voyagers National Park coins and so uh, we will place that somewhere in City Hall here under uh, glass and pass that around to be reviewed. We'll move to um, the audience. Anyone in the audience that wishes to bring something to the attention of the council? I'll say Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> we do have another meeting in August. I have to yeah, have all right, thank you. We'll go to uh, correspondence and a uh, number of items there are noted. Um, the Public Utilities Commission, a letter of inquiry on the service quality and customer service for your frontier communications uh, is noted. Um, my plans are to, to have the, uh, a letter from the Airport Commission because they have been very, very helpful to us in securing the uh, uh, a fiber optic line to serve the airport <clears throat> as well as assisting us with communications in uh, taking down the old uh, building and uh, uh, putting in the electrical vault and communication center for uh, the airport. So they've been very, very helpful uh, to us in that uh, regard. Further under uh, correspondence or any, uh, anything else to come before the council? Apologize for the uh, length of the meeting. Lots of discussion, and uh, it was very good. The next regular city council meeting will be Monday, August the 20th at 4:30 p.m. Nothing further to come before the council. This meeting will stand adjourned.